Well, praise God, we open for some questions and answers. Well, let's look at this. Mm, oops, all right. Trying to get a chat out. Okay. Yes, the first question there. From the tree study, these are the basics. Number one, a tree reversible vectoral sum of nature. Yes, it is. Good tree equals godly nature, godly nature. Mm, yes. Tree. Bad tree, ungodly nature, ungodly nurture. True enough. But in terms of nurture, we must remember the same thing happened to good and bad. Like the wise men and foolish men. They got the storm, the floods, and all those things. And the thing is, uh, life contains good things and bad things because this is a fallen world. So uh, the bad things can happen to good people, but they can still turn bad into good. Bad things happen to bad people, it makes them worse. And so remember, when we talk about DNA, it's the DNA that governs how we respond. We respond well to bad things. We respond well to evil things because we don't become evil. We, we give love instead of evil for evil. And the difference between the good person and bad person is that they both suffer the same nurture, but their nature brought a different response. That is Jesus' theology. And so here, number four, redeemable tree can be made good. Yes, indeed. As far as God is concerned, no one is beyond redemption except those whom he classifies as uh, chosen the abominable, abominable sin. And, and next, oh, thank you. So here's a question. Uh, for corruption to take place from a good tree, there must first be an evil seed that is true, an evil seed sown by the enemy. For corruption will take place when this evil seed spreads, absorbs all the good energy until it bears evil fruit. Yes, the nature of the tree must change first before it can become uh, bearing uh, bad fruit. So we got to guard our nature. We got to guard our heart all the time. And uh, this is how Satan, it, Lucifer became Satan. That is true. He was made a good tree, but he got corrupted and his nature changed. So the devil is a very clear example. He was not made to be lost. He was made good, but he allowed his nature to change. Until today, his nature is counted as totally lost and evil. And is beyond redemption after the judgment of angels. Nurture is used to strengthen the seed in the heart. Okay, that's a good statement. Next, cursing of the fig tree. Why instead of cursing could he have come and the bad fruit? He so why did he not? I mean, it is true, he could say, let fruit come up. And then comes along the next time and see the fruit coming forth. But he cursed because the fig tree that couldn't find fruit represents Israel. And Israel was about to see judgment. The Lord Jesus appearing as a Messiah looked for fruit. And from the top people who should have been the best fruit, he found them to be evil. And there was another parable that I did not refer to where a tree didn't bear fruit 
and they asked to uh, give it a chance. And Jesus mentioned three years. Three years represent the time he came as a Messiah to look for fruit. And so here the fig tree was to represent Israel. And that lots of leaves, but no fruit. And that's why it was allowed to be cursed. And let's look at the next one. Uh, why a man leaves his father and mother is united to his wife, they become flesh in Genesis 2.24. Uh, first question, what, why does it actually mean to leave his father and mother since we are still related to them, they help and advise us? I believe it's because as long as uh, you are under the authority and power of the in-laws of both sides, it's very hard to progress, to form a new family. And, and indeed, it is found to be correct when man, many people, of course, sometimes out of, uh, out of poverty or inability, uh, inability that they remain there. But the Bible advises that they must have a cut off so that the influence of both mother-in-law, both father-in-law does not pass down into your family. There's a cut off point. Because there's a tendency when you live under the authority of these people, they will somehow try to pass their influence to you. And, and then a sin is repeated. And then uh, familiar spirits uh, continue to do the same thing, same type of habit, everything starts passing on. And so there is a reason why there is a cut also that the habits are not passed on and you can start afresh and anew. Question number two, why and how was the word perceived by Adam back there since he had neither father and mother? God spoke those things for the future. And of course, uh, Adam and Eve, they had God as their father and they would have been the best and the Holy Spirit working in their lives. But still, uh, their free choice is there. And so the word that God spoke was for future generations. And they must start afresh and start new, build their own new habits, build their own new uh, things that they would do together. That separation is very important to the true development of a new family. We might disagree with God or the Bible, but you find that the Bible is always right. Well, praise the Lord. You know, believing the Bible and believing with it, that nature versus nurture, nature is 100%, is a switch inside our belief system. But once you, your belief system line up with the Bible, you find that how you view things are very different. You know, when you look out and you see in the news all the behavior of people, uh, some good, some bad. I mean, they're always making the news good or bad. Then you realize there's something wrong in their DNA, not something wrong in their nurture. And the only way these people can change is their DNA must change. The question comes here. Uh, regarding renewing the mind, new DNA or improvement of DNA of our mind, the Bible seems to imply that we have a new mind. A new mind within us when we are born again. A new mind that thinks different type of thoughts. And in the book of Ephesians, we talk about be renewed by the spirit of your mind. So there is a spirit of the mind. Romans 8 talk about um, a spiritual mind versus a carnal mind. So the moment we are born again, we seem to have a spiritual mind awakened the spirit of our mind. 
and we learn to yield to those thoughts from the mind of Christ within us. And renewal of the mind, even the word re renew, implies a new mind. And uh, remember the Bible speaks about, I will give you a new heart. It gives us a new spirit. It actually does give us a new mind that is based on the new DNA. So the new mind is a new DNA. Uh, Pastor, this uh, yes. when Jesus talked about the um, um, the vine and the branches, and that He is the vine, we are the branches. Uh, he's also talking about that we need to receive His His life and His DNA so that uh, we can uh, really bear fruit and be use be be good. Yes. And the Bible talks, did talk about taking on the nature of Christ. And that's uh, in the book of Hebrews. Talk about hypostasis. And it talk about how uh, yeah, we are partaking of his nature. And that's why he emphasized on being born again. And born again is something that we choose and allow Christ to change us, change our DNA. And there are many things about changing our DNA where there's a time process uh, to receive the seed of God, as in First John, inside us, to receive the nature of God that has been placed uh, within us says in Hebrews uh, chapter 2, verse 14, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shed in the same, that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were their whole lifetime subject to bondage. So there is a partaking of uh, his nature that he wants to establish uh, within all of us. Mm. Another parable of the trees, right? Uh, Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed in which is sown in the a man took and sown in the field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it's greater than the herbs and become a tree. Mm. So the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. So this is more of talking about the end times, right? That the kingdom of heaven will be fully established. Um, mm. So the birds um, is are the birds are the uh, the hidden, right? The hidden. Uh, like, uh, the hidden, yeah. We affect the hidden. Mm. Uh, they're also good birds in terms of doves and eagles, but it, it's all kind of mixture. And the closest illustration we found is in the book of Daniel, referring to Nebuchadnezzar, who is like a great and mighty tree on all the birds' nests there. And so it's a prophecy about the kingdom of God becoming greater than the Babylonian uh, empire. Mm. So this is also, like, in a way, a prophecy about uh, the church becoming 
uh, strong and prosperous and there is financial breakthrough. Uh, yes, Isaiah 60. Mm, amen. Two big breakthroughs that are coming forth. One is a breakthrough of miracles and signs and wonders. The second is a breakthrough of finances. Mm. Amen. Recently in the news, they were predicting that Elon Musk will be the first trillionaire. So based on how he's progressing, plus the next and the next guy, and you look at the news, I say, no, that will not be, because it never included the famine and the great shaking of the whole earth and the ruin of USA. So when that takes place, a lot of the... Uh, Millionaires will just become millionaires and millionaires just become ordinary without any amount of money. This coming disaster that will strike the earth uh, will impoverish a lot of people who are rich. They will suddenly become also a paupers. And so it's got shaking the earth. And then there will be a revival of where wealth will be in the hands of his church and his people. Mm. Praise the Lord. Anyway, the Lord commits to us the true riches. Yes. Because nowadays the, the, the dollars and all that uh with the way they print and uh with inflation, uh sometimes the dollars are so a lot of zeros uh, but may not be useful. Some of yeah. the countries already when they had hyperinflation, the they can be you know millions uh but it's nothing. Hmm. Praise the Lord. There's nothing else we're going to close let me see any other question uh since choice is influenced by dna <laughs> it seems there might be an exertion of willpower to choose dna altering choices for example the willpower <laughs> to delicately confess the word when corruption is introduced procrastination and laziness to dna how do you strengthen that willpower to choose till DNA changes. Uh, to me, DNA is the thought before the thought. What makes you think in a certain way? And a person can't help but think according to their DNA. And it's more of uh, allowing that flow of DNA. And apparently, the only thing about it is you can block it or you can flow with it. And so as we flow with it, and if that's our default, what is our default heart and default mind? In other words, what's going on inside there? What's your default? So if your default is always being drawn towards God, always talking, thinking about God, that uh, being born again, that should be the way it is. And that enhances DNA on itself. And um, uh, our free choice, our ability to choose, uh, we make a big deal out of it on the planet Earth. But if Jesus' theology is correct, that DNA is more powerful than free choice, then we realize how much we need to have a uh, the work of the Holy Spirit upon us to change our DNA. So it's more, that's why Jesus exhorts the humble. Because the humble, the DNA is a place they can change. But the proud cannot. The proud is already stuck to their own DNA. 
But when we are humble and when we tremble at His word, that shows that we are pliable. We are on the operation table. We don't struggle against God. We don't struggle against the Holy Spirit. We work with the Holy Spirit. And is to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit all the time and let the Holy Spirit keep changing us, changing us. And day by day, and one fine day, we look and say, wow, He has done so many changes beyond even what we can understand. And in the book of Philippians, it shows very clearly that even the ability to choose is influence and by God or by the enemy. And that shows that even the free choice and being free is important. But understanding that something is greater than that, the DNA, we yield to God. We choose to spend time in His presence and His presence does transform us. Humility is the key. Yielding is the key. For oh, DNA being transformed. Allow the Holy Spirit to insert the nature of Christ inside us. Praise the Lord. Any other questions before we close? Pastor, uh, lastly, uh, the uh, parable of the sower, uh, we know the seed is actually the same and the seed is all powerful. And the seed, of course, from a mustard seed, it can grow to a huge tree. Uh, so for the seed to bear fruit, um, the ground is the part of, can we say the ground is like the nurture part that we have some responsibility to uh, do something about it. Yes. In fact, in, in, in the place where the parable is mentioned, uh, it even mentioned that the ground is the heart. And that means uh, uh, how the heart is positioned was the key to the DNA being able to flow within us. And um, uh, it did mention the word heart when you look at the parable, the sow and the seed. And uh, when Jesus explained it, he mentions uh, the things that choke the word. And then even in uh, Luke 8, in Luke 8, let's see this part here, as he explains it. Um, he says it here in verse 15 of Luke 8. But the ones that fell on the good ground. Now what makes a ground a good ground? And the word good ground is the same word for, it's the same word for a good fruit, which is the word kalos, which means a beautiful fruit. And the, one, the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word, have a noble and good heart. Keep it and bear fruit with patience. Notice their heart is noble. Noble, noble here talking about a uh, beautiful, a beautiful heart, a, a good heart. And um, uh, then it says here, uh, agathos is the other word. Kalos and agathos, both words which are referring to the parable of the tree, the good tree. And then they say, they must keep it. So there's a keeping process. That keeping process is where the DNA is being changed. The word keep is a word, uh, katiko, which is from the root word echo. Echo means to hold. 
uh, when in the Greek you say uh, I have, you say echo, which means I have. Then they add the word kate, which is uh, to hold down. So it's to hold down. What it means is hold deep inside you until the DNA is processed. So there is a keeping part that people forgot. When the word comes, you must keep it. Keep it. Why? Because there's someone want to steal it, the devil. So mm. when you keep it, I believe, long enough, a DNA changes. Because the heart is where the DNA changes. A good heart versus a bad heart or distracted heart. So in the parable of the sower, the heart is the key. Because the word is the same. Good ground, bad ground, empty ground, dry ground is the same. The seed is the same. But the heart is different. Mm. And so this heart is also not um, nurture. It's also still nature. It's still what the Lord gave us. The Lord gave us a new heart. Yes. And the heart needs to be of the right DNA that is able to accept the seed and to let the seed grow. Then our part is small, but it's still important. It's the keeping part, which yes. is uh, a choice to, as Paul say, um, focus or um, on the things above. Set your mind on the things above and yes. not the things on this earth. All we have to do be open to God. And there are two Pharisees that open to God, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. So a Pharisee can change their heart. But the other Pharisees refuse. They don't even want to believe. They won't want to accept. But Nicodemus accepted. He came to Jesus and said, no one can do what you do except you come from God. So he straight away accepted Jesus. Even though he was a Pharisee, he accepted. So he has a good heart. And to him, Jesus was talking about being born again. Talking about the nature of things. And you know this is true. I mean, whenever someone has a vision or whenever there's a prophecy, what's the first thing? To believe or not believe? Or God sends a preacher, God sends a prophet, a man of God. They come, they deliver the word. First choice is believe or don't believe. We always have a choice. Then when we choose to believe, it might stun us, it might shake us, it might say, wow, really? Is it true? Then we, in the end, end up accepting. That's where our DNA starts being processed and changed. How our heart is. It's important. A humble heart. A heart that shakes and trembles when God speaks His word. We respect God so much that when His word comes, we bow before Him. Then our DNA is pliable. Praise the Lord. We give thanks and don't forget that uh, Wednesday there's an all-night prayer going on, broadcast from Uluru. And I will try to, uh, because we're also traveling on that Friday, Saturday, and so I will pre-record the messages for Friday and also uh, for Sunday for the next coming week. And in less than an hour or so, we will be starting our journey to Uluru, the long, longest journey that I ever taken. <laughs> and together with friends and family here, we're all going to uh, be there. And uh, whatever God has in store, we will release it. Amen. Let's give thanks. Father, we are grateful to you. It takes a long time for us Father, to accept that between nature and nurture is actually 100% nature. The nurturing part, Father, we realize that experiences are the same all over the world. Good and bad, difficult or hard or sad, everyone in the world has the same 
similar type experiences. But it's only what is inside our heart, our nature, that causes us to respond differently or better so that we bear fruit. Sometimes it's not easy to bear fruit because of the challenges. But when we keep believing in you, the fruit comes forth. Nothing can stop the fruit from bearing in our lives because your Holy Spirit is upon us. And we are the believers in your word. You've even given us the title, a believer. We believe in your word, believe in your rhema, and we allow your word to prevail so that your miracles, your signs and wonders, and your prosperity can flow forth through us. Establish the kingdom of God in these days of the Ten Toes. Establish your signs and wonders. We thank you, Father. Your word will always come to pass. And we believe your word and yield to it. Let it be unto us according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen.